Hi, it's Kernotex here with a new set of videos about Linux from scratch and I'll be covering the most recent version of Linux, Linux from scratch to date which is version 11.3 released today, 1st of March 2023. Now I'm going to do something slightly different which I've only done once before. I'm going to be compiling uh, Linux from scratch within a virtual environment as I've had um, a few people ask me to do that. I've done it once before on the videos when I first set my channel up um, but I tend not to do that. I tend to build directly onto bare metal, i.e. directly onto the machine itself um, primarily because the virtual environment can give false test results um, either producing extra um, errors or failures or um, maybe passing tests that would be normally expected to fail. Um, also there's the aspect that you're not getting the full performance of the machine because the virtualization is a, a layer that can slow down the processing, the compiling and also it tends to be the fact that you, you um, are limited to the number of cores you can allocate uh, to the virtual environment so there's as I say, a couple of reasons but there is obviously the convenience of it you can just plop it onto any machine and run it without having to worry about trashing what's already on the machine um, or have any having any interaction with anything else so yeah good to have virtual environments and to know about them um, but like I say not, not always my my preference um, in case you've never watch my videos before I do go through everything I record everything and publish everything that I do right from the beginning all the way up to getting a working system with a prompt boot booting the Linux from scratch system to the prompt some people question why I do this I do actually show everything the compiling and everything and it's purely to show that well a that there's nothing hidden away there's no magic that I do in the background to get it to work it's all as you see it um, and it shows that you know any, anybody can do it basically just just a case of reading the documentation carefully and putting in the right commands also it's a good reference if you want to compare your results to mine um, you may want to go back through the compiling as a kind of a log if you like to see how my compile went to compare it to yours um, some people report they have better success sometimes than, than I have uh, in terms of tests, results and so on. And while I mentioned tests, uh, in the final part where we build the actual system itself, uh, it's recommended in the book to run the tests. Not all the tests pass. There are known tests that fail or tests fail that are known about. Um, some might may fail, might not fail. And you may be thinking, well, what's the point in running tests if they're going to fail or they're known to fail? Well, they do give you some measure of uh, how well the system's been built. Obviously, if you run tests and they're failing, you know, hundreds or thousands of tests are failing, then that's a pretty good indication that something's gone seriously wrong. If you're getting one or two tests fail here and there, then you can probably ignore that. It may be just some unknown factor. Um, if you do decide to use Linux from scratch as a day-to-day -day operating system you might want to take a closer look to those um, anomalies but other than that yes generally you would expect that a system would run test free but I suppose because of the com complexity of compiling programs um, also the issue of what operating system you use to host the new environment and the variety of CPUs, the speeds, number of cores and so on. There's so many variables that I guess you're never always going to get a completely successful um, test pattern. Having said that, most of the programs will compile successfully. It only tends to be the more complex and bigger packages such as GCC, the compiler, and one or two others. There's one package will compile that re relies on another package that uh, won't yet have been compiled. So we build that, test it, we'll know about what will fail because of the other package that doesn't exist 
when we come to build that package, we can go back and then rebuild that first package um, to prove that it does actually work when the uh, dependencies are in place. So, so I'm going to be building this in a virtual environment. I'm actually going to be using VirtualBox. Um, I won't show you the ins and outs of downloading and installing that because that will vary uh, depending on what system you're using, whether you're on Windows, Mac or Linux. Um, they're all going to be slightly different. I'll just show you the home pages and how to get hold of the packages and, and so on. Um, I'm actually on a Gen 2 system, a Linux Gen 2 system, so that's not a download in a normal sense. Gen 2 is a compiled operating system, though it's a lot more automated than Linux from scratch. Uh, so, yes, normally it would be a download for the majority of people. Um, other systems, it will come through some sort of package manager, as it does in Gen 2 in a, in a funny sort of way, as I say, it gets compiled. But other Linux systems will download a pre-built binary so like I said I won't be showing details of that that should be fairly straightforward and I'm sure it'll be helping the web pages for that I will be showing how I configure the virtual box and then I'll show how uh, we kick off the installation from there so as you can see on the screen I've got the home page of the Linux from scratch um, project and you can see the web page, the landing page for the website is www.linuxfromscratch.org. And what we can do, first of all, is we can go to news and it should tell us that the latest, latest release has been published. And yep, there it is. It gives you some information about what's been updated since the previous release, which would have been six months ago in um, September 2022. And there's various options there for reading online, downloading the book to read locally. locally as I think you can download it as a PDF or an HTML file. Um, the first two links are for the System V version, which is the version I'll be following as it's the traditional version. It's the one they're presumably still using as the standard base version, um, probably because it's simpler. There's fewer packages to install. Um, but if you prefer to go through the system D routes, then there's two links here for the online and download options. So, so we're going, going through the system V, it's just simpler. If this is more of a learning exercise for you, doing this for a project to learn a bit more about Linux from scratch, uh, or sorry, Linux um, and Linux from scratch, then I would stick with a simpler method and then start to explore other options, even though you may be used to system D. Just stick to the simpler, simpler option. 